Hello, this is Taking Art Break podcast with Lisa and Lauren from Art is Moving. Today, we're so excited. We have the visionaries from a group called The Collie, and you have an amazing project called the 6,000 Circle Project. If you could introduce yourselves and then kind of tell us about the project a little bit, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Hi, hi. Um, I'm Yasmin Lambie Simpson, and I'm an artist. I'm currently living in in Wales, and um, I met these wonderful uh, collaborators about five five years ago or so, and um, we have been collaborating and working together um, across uh, Zoom and in in real time. And um, we've come up with this concept after. Um, another project that we were doing in Prague. So, hi, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. You go, Chantal. Oh, good morning. My name is Chantal Goldthwaite. I am also an artist. Um, currently visiting the very northern part of the Washington Peninsula. Um, yeah, just kind of live in life and see what's coming my way. So <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, good morning. I'm Sheila Metcalf Tobin. I'm an artist and instructor in the Bay Area, uh, California. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited about this uh, project and this morning getting to talk to you all about it and can't wait to talk more about our collaboration. Um, so I, uh, I'm so happy to have you guys part of our conversation. The Take an Art Break um, podcast is like an ongoing conversation and we're always inspired by the previous conversation to ask a question to our current guests. And last time we were talking to the wonderful Catherine Jostin um, who has the Global Art Project for Peace. And uh, we sort of touched on the subject of um, a work of art sort of opening up an individual um, and their personal journey and opening them up to shift and change and then what that might do universally. And so that inspired the question that we want to ask you today as a jumping off point, which is can art shift a paradigm? So jump right in. Let's start that conversation and see where it goes. Um, I'm going to start with the obvious answer, which is yes, because a paradigm, <laughs> a paradigm is a belief and we can always shift our beliefs. And as we acquire new information, new ways of seeing things, new way, new perspectives, new ways of seeing others, it it can't do anything but open us up to a shift in our own beliefs and our own perceptions. Yeah. And I think I think I, I'll let Sheila go. <laughs> I think I've experienced, I think we experienced this in Prague actually really profoundly when we did our first circle installation. Each of us chose a theme and an image and hung circles and asked participants to choose a theme and or, or an image and respond to it on the backside by writing. So our stories were present on the wall and in our statements and then our our, our guest stories became a part of the, the exhibition as well. And then we also got to speak those stories out loud and have others respond to us. And it is, it's a profound experience to be in a room where others are sharing very intimate parts of their lives with each other. I mean, it just doesn't happen that often that you get to share in that way. And this project is meant to extend that experience so that we touch more and more people share, share our stories with others and have their stories shared with us. And it, it's, it's so, it's always powerful. Yeah. I think the, I think here, what we're trying to do also with helping to shift this paradigm is inviting others in. Mm -hmm. we're, it, we're giving them the opportunity to share their stories, to look at something differently, to shift how they think about the feminine. Um, and this is an inclusive project. It is It is not just for women, it is for everyone. It's for all, it's for human mankind to think about what is the feminine energy and to really put some focus on that. So yes, from what we have seen and how we have developed our project and the reasons why we're developing it is because we have had positive support and from and feedback from from, from the community. Two uh, 
to like to get like kind of like black and white what is the paradigm you really want to shift mm. if we could kind of like you know define that it's a belief system but what is that paradigm you're thinking to shift Chantel? oh i get to take it <laughs> <laughs> all eyes are on you <laughs> um i don't this uh we're going to step, we want to share the feminine aspect. I think historically feminine energy has always been looked at as very defined and encapsulated. You know, you're a homemaker, you're a nurturer, you're a, you're a this. And then it became women had to step out into the world. So then women had to step into their masculine mm. and then, it, you know, I've got to be a boss bitch and I got to, I got to hustle and I got to do this. And what we're asking people to do is really take a look at what is the feminine energy. And if we can take even the feminine part out of that, it makes it easier because life, life consists of dualities, you know, energy comes in dualities. It's positive, it's negative, it's black, it's white, it's yin, it's yang, it's masculine, it's feminine, but the aspects that are held by the feminine energy, which really is steeped in a place of flow and surrender and allowing and receiving and the masculine energy in its most positive is action and guidance and leadership and we've seen a lot of that and it turns so we would love people to step into that feminine aspect of flow of surrender it doesn't mean you don't take action but you take action from a place that is from intuition, that is from in, internal guidance, not external. And what we hope is when people can step more into a place of internal guidance, whatever, however that may look like for them, it brings more balance. It brings a healing to the world because we aren't looking for that external validation, that external filling up, that external need for satisfaction. It's all in here. And yes, it's an art project. <laughs> and is it going to save the world? No. But the more we can shed light and bring the notion of the feminine, um, educate people as to aspects of the feminine, bring about conversations of how do we step into ourselves? How do we step into that place of receiving, of healing, of surrender? I think every little increment makes a huge difference because if every person on this planet just stepped in this much and you added all those little muches up, it adds to a whole lot. So I um, would say it's also shifted our individual paradigms already. The re ju just beginning this journey and researching more and everything that Chantel just said and starting to embody that and also with an intuition and collaboration and looking at the aspects of the feminine of, of being inclusive and being adaptive so that everything isn't all tied in a, in a nice, neat package. And that's the way we're going to keep it because these are our parameters. We're saying, here's the beginning. We want it to be circular. Where does it go from there? What do other people add to our conversation? What add? How, how does that continue to shift the paradigm of how we think and embody in a more feminine way? Uh, way a more feminine way of being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so break down this project six thousand circle project for us that uh, it's a creation on a circle and it is the intention behind the creation mm -hmm. is the feminine mm -hmm. and uh so you have your circle you sit in the feminine is there a specific question you want people to ask themselves? Is there a specific thing you want them to do before they start creating and then move on, move into um, the exhibition or the showing of the artwork and the sharing of the artwork? Can you break that down for us? Well, I'll, I'll start a little bit and then we'll um, jump in as uh, as we go through, I think. But yes, basically, the, the, the it has to be a circular substrate. And as as we know, in 
you know, we were we were just chatting about this, um, and because everything that we are asking others to do, we are doing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so when we, you know, when we're taking on this this working on a circle, it's challenging. It, it's different. There, there, there are no edges, you know. And I mm-hmm. think that that's another part of this paradigm shift when we mm-hmm. look at something where there isn't a middle, there isn't a, a horizon line. That it, it 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 goes on. And so there's that there is that aspect of the circle that we really want to convey so you don't have to be an artist to have that experience right um and I think that that is also important to us we we want to have this community project and we want it's open to anybody and everybody and so um as a group we've come up with um prompts to help to help um, the creator along the way so that the prompts can be uh, on the surface. What does a circle mean to you? What does, who's a feminine that you honor in your life? Um, um, All the way to very deeper, deeper questions um, um, like um, what has uh, happened in your life that in your feminine journey that has been negative. you know so that so that this project is open to to all um sheila chantal do you want to add and carry on that (laughs) that stream that thought (laughs) yeah we are and the offering prompts we've been talking about uh, organizing and offering prompts every month uh through our social media through instagram and and working on the that, that theme ourselves uh, and whatever it, it means uh, to each individual person and, and their response to it, um, we'll, we'll get to see what that is. Um, and it's, it's, it's helping us to, again, like dive deeper into what the feminine is and how it's represented in the world and, and how it could be negatively represented in the world, but how we might rethink that, that presentation and maybe even find its, its, its origin story and, and reroute it so that it has a more positive aspect in the world. Um, and each, each the, in terms of like where this goes, each individual just do, excuse me, each individual just doing it themselves is really powerful. And then individuals doing it in groups is also a possibility. I think it was also really powerful. Again, just like this, getting to share our stories uh, and hear each other and hear each other's stories is really profound. And then p- potentially the exhibitions, wherever those people are, however they're participating and, and or, uh, it, well, and we're, we will have a group exp- you know, e- exhibition in March uh, with the Northern California Women's Caucus for the Arts at the Ar- Ar- ARC Gallery. And then hopefully in November, we're working toward a group exhibition of, of gratitude with as many circles as we possibly can. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> And I'll step up now and kind of give a little overview um, for those listening. So the 6,000 Circle Project, it was really important for us to take a feminine approach to this. It isn't, here's a project, here's what you do, here's how you participate, you send everything to us and we'll do the rest. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've put together a concept. So we would love everyone to think about the feminine, feminine energy, the women in your lives, all that that encompasses. We would love you to make art on a circle substrate. You can make stained glass. You can take a camera and run around in a circle. You can do a dance. You can macrame, however it works for you. We would like you to make art on a circular substrate in reaction to the feminine. And then what you do with that is up to you. We are going to put together some kind of exhibition where people can send those in, but we are very much encouraging you Mm -hmm. also to get with your friends, find a coffee shop where you can display the circles yourselves, go glue them up around town and, you know, put on your little ninja outfits and have a great time. (laughs) So people drive by and go, what are all those circles about? Uh, Find a friend with a gallery, put them in empty shop windows. God knows there's enough of those around these days. Um, And as far as making, you can make them by yourself, but for Thanksgiving, I'm going to put a table of art supplies out. So everyone at Thanksgiving can sit there and work on circles about the feminine and something that we can talk about while we're there. 
Um, we know people are getting their church groups and their book groups and stuff, and they can each do their own themes. If you're reading a book, make it a theme about the heroine of the book, the protagonist. Mm -hmm. It's it's so broad, and we have done this intentionally so that everybody can find a way in to participate as little or as much as they like. And again, it's coming back around to that feminine energy. How can we make it so open and so easy? We're so used to everything being constraints. You can only do this if you've got this qualification, if you're this kind of person, if you follow <clears throat> these rules and this path, and it's always just like this. And we want to, we want to make it just so wide and yeah. everyone can find their own path in. But so it's an interesting project in that sense. We are putting a concept out there and we want you to steal it. We want you to run with it. We want you to, we want you to go have five international exhibitions with circles and just let us know. Cause it hits. <laughs> a, well, it crosses that line. You know, people in art are always like, you stole my idea. <laughs> you stole For my sure. thing. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. it's, it's so clenched up. We're like, hey, take our idea. But send really? us images. Send yeah. us images. Record Just it. Tell you know? us about it. Hey, we might, where, who knows what's going to happen with this? If we have 6,000 circles that have been all over the world, it, it, that, that, what an incredible thing, right? And, and we have visuals. We're just asking for you to send us at visuals. We will have those on our Instagram. Mm -hmm. We're collecting that in the hopes that you, you, maybe this becomes a book. Maybe this becomes um, the stories of everyone's um, experience with this. You know, it doesn't end with the making off or the displaying off. You know, that's that's the that's the starting point. You know, and it so. also doesn't have to be a huge accomplishment or success. It can just be maybe only 300 people make circles. Cool. It was still a fun project and worth the journey. Right. I love it. I love, I love the micro and the macro of this. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so open-ended, but I want to know your why you are three women that got together and you're doing this. What is this passion or what is the energy? I mean, you have the vision, but what, what is your real, what's the why? I mean, you want to, you're, you love working together and, you know, kind of like on the macro, what, what, what what's your why? <laughs> Individual or as a group? Both. What's the why? Because <laughs> you are, you know, it is the macro and the micro. It is individual and then you guys are the collective. So does anyone have our feminista? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't get yeah. to that. <laughs> Somebody else. I, yeah. If you want I to keep going I have for a second. I have the I have our fam feminista right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> Yasmin's our leader. <laughs> no, no. We get, you know we all we all have skills that we all come together oh, yeah. with. It's beautiful. We know, yeah. <laughs> and and we and this is why I think that we are that that for me I think is part of my why mm -hmm. my personal why working on this on on our project together in in Prague and um uh was was just really really fulfilling and for us to be able to come together um and do this as a community project instead of a personal project was really important as well right stepping into a different way of for the calling to manifest itself in in the community um and so very much our Feministos is, is is the calling feministo um, or the callings. And uh, we embrace and celebrate generosity, joy, inclusivity, curiosity, and wonder. We honor all forms of creativity as pathways to connect to self and community. We believe supporting the expression of feminine energy, nourishing creativity, cultivating collaboration, and encouraging visibility will foster a more balanced legacy for our collective future. Ooh, nice. That's our collective. <laughs> I, love it. I um I just want to uh, say so say something that I think it's really interesting that um you are going on this journey at the same time as your participant, your possible participant is going on the journey and there's vulnerability to that. Um, there's that jumping into the unknown that is so powerful. 
Um, but with that comes fear. And for a lot of people that might potentially participate in this project, um, what kind of challenges do you anticipate speaking of paradigm shifting, right? When you're taking away the parameters that people have become so accustomed to and so comfortable with, you're just like ripping those. And then you're like, go for it. Uh, and Lisa and I have experienced this in, in some of our projects where we were like giving someone a blank piece of paper and they are looking at us with a blank face because they're so afraid of that, right? How do you, how do you anticipate sort of uh, helping people work through those challenges? Um, I'll speak to that. Um, we did talk about this. It, it is a little overwhelming when you have something this broad. So, um, and Sheila did mention, we are going to be starting a monthly prompt and we're all going to be creating together. So for November, December, the holiday season, it's going to be the dark feminine. And it gives everyone a chance to go, ooh, okay, there's a very precise topic mm -hmm. that I can go research. I can dive deep. I can just kind of read, read the little Google bar that shows up. But it <laughs> gives you it gives you those parameters. And we know as artists, the more parameters we have, the easier it is to make the art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blank paper, the blank canvas is overwhelming. So we're going to do this for the year because this project runs, technically it is open and running from March of 24 through November of 24. We're starting with International Women's Month and running through November with um, elections and right. Thanksgiving here in the States and all that. Mm -hmm. But so we're hoping the prompts will be well attended. Again, it gives you a narrower focus. You've got the substrate. Um, we've closed it down as much as possible to help people. And again, we're all creating together because we're going to create throughout the month and then we can all share. And those circles can then at some point come in and go towards an exhibition. But yes, a, a theme. Sometimes we just need a narrower scope because the overwhelm these days is on such a massive scale. It's like, just give me something easy. <laughs> and I think also in terms of like making it easier, we've talked about doing tutorials uh, on making a circle. Yasmin has already begun that work of making some videos on, on how she's making circles in her studio. And also um, beyond that, resources, because, you know, we're learning, we're, you know, I for sure <laughs> am learning about feminine energy and dark feminine, all of these different, you know, things that are certainly, you know, in my periphery and always have been but I, I haven't understood their origins or necessarily couldn't actually if you ask me what I would I come up with them and I think maybe many people are in that same position so we're going to have a list of resources or links that people can go to to learn more as we have done um, as part of our journey you know since before we went to Prague we began researching this and I was always googling it <laughs> mm -hmm. like, what are we talking about exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> like oh oh yeah I know you know <laughs> I know that but <laughs> I didn't know I knew it <laughs> so yeah we really want to encourage everybody you know that whether they're artists or not to be able to do this project and to feel confident and good about what they explore and what they learn and what they create mm -hmm. and and I think also I thought that was a great question by the way Lauren I I, I really like the question um um I, and I think the fear and the vulnerability that comes up, I think, because it, it it does come up, it comes up for me definitely, and it and we've talked about, um, we talk about this when we are in our meetings together to um, to support each other, because we don't know everything. We there's no way, and and we are learning from each other, and we're also learning from those that are coming in and joining us, because part of this project, which is really important is to ask others, organizations, other women's groups, other art groups to join us and create this project within their groups. And we are learning from them. Mm -hmm. We're learning from the exhibitions that the Women's Caucus of the Arts are putting on. Alabama is, is in our corner. What you all are doing with Art is Moving, we're learning from you. The, your other podcasts with... with um, the, the, the art on brain, you know, the brain on art, you know, I mean, it's, it's all about opening up, 
opening up, learning from each other. We don't have the parameters, right? We don't have those the, the structure. We are inviting others to, you know, to help us along this journey. Um, like like Chantal said, throwing out this concept, it's free. And let's let's go on this journey together and let's learn from each other. And that's how we can change a paradigm, I, I believe. Yeah, I, think, I think too, um, we all went through the same coaching program. And one of the things that our coach used to always say was, we take the personal and we make it universal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when, something women have always done because we gather, because we talk. And when we talk, when we share our stories, when we get personal, we remove the shame from those things. And so another aspect of this is sparking those conversations, having those conversations, removing that shame, removing that fear, even if it's just around making art, you know, right. it, but it can go as deep as anything. So yes, we want we want conversations. We want people to talk. We want people to share. And I think that's really at the core. And also I'm, I'm, this is what I'm getting. It's like, you want to almost undefine what the feminine is. It's not, it's almost like, what is the feminine? And there's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like undefining the feminine, like open, opening it up into a big circle. And just to have that conversation, because Chantel, you said it is, we live in this polar, like male, female. Mm -hmm. What if it's not that? What if it is just this open ended, <laughs> yeah, spiral, like the, my painting behind me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> I <laughs> give you that. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> Something to say right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and in order to define something for yourself, you have to experience it. You have to gather information mm -hmm. and knowledge. So, yeah. and again, it's not something that people have actively in history been like, well, let's go figure out what the feminine is. Right. <laughs> so right. if we throw it out there and people go, oh, that's something I've always done. That puts me in my feminine energy. You know, the more we experience those things, the more we understand, we seek them out, then we can decide or redecide mm -hmm. what what is the feminine and how does that balance out with the other energies? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want this any more than we want that. Right. So we need to find mm -hmm. this. Need to find that balance. But we need to explore that other side to define it for ourselves, to choose for ourselves which pieces work best. Mm -hmm. And if we're really lucky, maybe this little art project will help a little bit in that. The more we put it out there and get get it on people's tongues and in their conversations, that's mm -hmm. all we can do. I think it that helps open things up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm hearing that. Uh a shift in paradigm, right? It happens sort of one moment, one art break, one artwork, one person, one conversation. One circle. A, yeah. <laughs> and I, um, but also I, one, un, yeah. one unconditioning, you know, we're conditioned. So one unconditioning, questioning that conditioning, right? Yeah. I, I, well, I think it's, it's really, um, I mean, I appreciate that you are diving so deeply into something that a lot of people will be fearful of. Um, I, I appreciate that. I, I love projects that do that. Um, uh, Lisa and I are all constantly talking about, okay, we reached that edge and now we're, we're seeing that everybody else is caught up to that edge. How can we get, how can we push it further? And I see you doing that with the 6,000 circle project, because for me, it's like, oh, I can dive in. I'll get a circle. I'll, I'll talk about the feminine. But if I turn around and have a conversation with my neighbor about it, they're going to be like, uh, and they're yeah. going to be a little scared of it. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, and I think that is, um, I, I applaud you for, um, walking into that dark feminine. That's a great place to start, right. Is just be like, let's <laughs> just go straight to that shadow and let's just, let's just <laughs> it get is comfortable Scorpio that, season, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and it is interesting because we do make assumptions based on who we are, our knowledge base and what we're comfortable with. But yeah, the average person at, at the grocery store is going to be like, 
Um, <laughs> that's witchy, weird, woo woo, mm-hmm. spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep it over there. That has nothing yeah. to do with me. And that's what we're trying to say too. Even with the easiest of prompts, everybody has a mother. Everybody has a grandmother. Everybody has a woman somewhere in their lives that they had a connection to. Yeah. And well, if you well, don't feel like energy. diving deep into the murky depths of the dark feminine and Lilith and Medusa and all that kind of stuff, then yeah. stick with mom and grandma. It's mm-hmm. easy. Everyone, there's a place for everyone to walk into this at a level of comfort. You know, you don't have to know the archetypes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can just feel good dancing. You can enjoy making pie. That's, that's a place to start, but knowing what it is then opens you up to the conversation. Right. Well, then maybe asking yourself, why do, why am I comfortable making pie? Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) <laughs> what is it about it's making pie that makes too. me feel good? <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. um, but always just kind of um, pushing a little bit further and deeper. Yeah, pushing, pushing the non-boundaries. Any um, any good stories that you've um, had since you started the project? Any testimonials or anything that's interesting that's happened? To you or to others? Yeah. I, uh, if you, officially, we haven't started yet, really. So we haven't, like, in terms of people making circles, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think we've gotten feedback yet about that part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, people joining, you know, and, and talking about how they're going to do this project themselves or how they're going to do it with others, we're getting um and I think in terms of like what we saw in Prague with people responding to our circles and writing down very personal, personal experiences on the back of our circles as part of our installation there, that was definitely more experiential. Um, uh, yeah, and, and very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. You were going to say something though, Chantal, I think. Oh, no, it's gone now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think by putting by um, releasing releasing the the um, project on Instagram and sending out and talking and trying to make connections within our own personal uh, groups, um, we have almost seventy people who have signed up to join us on this journey. And I think that's pretty amazing. Um, And that was, you know, we, our excitement was, you know, releasing the project, um, which was mid, mid October, Chantal, was that mid October? We did that September, September. And then watching our numbers come up and Mm -hmm. then getting the emails, you know, and, and um, this is how you find out about it and getting the emails. And, and so, that in itself was um, was pretty exciting and has been, and we're reaching out to those people now. It's led us to do, um, okay, let's make sure that we keep them in the group. You know, this is the idea, and they don't forget. So, um, hence, getting a calendar of a monthly uh, prompts yeah. and things like that, and then also rec- realizing, well, we well we've got to have a place where people can go. And Sheila has got um, on her website now a page where um, goes directly to our project, um, the calling, and you can download, uh, fill out the form and download uh, the form, the present, the participation form and, um, and get more information. So I think just by us building this, you know, this project, we've learned so much more and we've expanded and it's just like throwing it out, you know, into yeah. the circle and it's just rippling out. So, um, it, yeah, it's it's pretty wonderful. <laughs> I Just to take that stigma of the boss, the boss lady away, just so everyone knows, we've never done a project like this before. <laughs> we have no clue what we're doing. <laughs> we are learning every inch of the way, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. Oh, you, God, go. I love you know, that. I love that. when okay. we start these projects, it's like, I get so overwhelmed. Yasmin's the, okay, next step, next step. We'll have our call Monday. We'll have our call Friday. And we just inch our way along. And that's how we do it. 
Yeah. But yeah, yeah. and we every person we doing. talk to, every every interaction we have like this, we learn something. Somebody suggests something to us or connects us to other people. And it just keeps growing in this really beautiful, organic, grassroots way, which is mm-hmm. really important, you know, it's, it's, and, and, and more feminine <laughs> in nature. Right. You know, like mm-hmm. we're really trying to pay attention to how we do everything so that we mm-hmm. stay in line with that. And it's it's a completely new, it's a completely new paradigm. Love yeah. it. Nice. Yeah, um, I feel like I feel like we need to have another conversation because it this is bringing up something for me, which is like uh, because I I I feel in tune with it because you guys are basically like I it's like you have something inside yourself that's like I need to do this thing, and rather than just doing it by yourself, you're doing it the three of you together, and then you're like, hey world, let's just all do it together. <laughs> and I, Right. And what, what is that? Because that, like, when I think about my own art, my own art is always that, like, I am the type of person that is obsessed with people, but I'm, but I'm also like, kind of like, I don't, I have my limits. I get overwhelmed by them very quickly. So all of my art is like pushing me towards people, but also still has a wall. Like, it's really interesting. So like, we're going to have to catch up with you for part two, because I really want to dive into that question, which is like, why are you inviting the whole world to go on this journey with you? What is it about that? Um, So on that point, I just want to say thanks for taking the time today to talk to us. And I can't wait to catch up maybe mid project to see how it's going. And then to end, how can people become part of this circle 6,000 circle project? Where can they go? Find us on Instagram at the 6,000 Circle Project, or you can follow, find us at The Calling 22. Either way. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, we'll thank you, ladies, for having us. Of course. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.